This is Dave Winkler with Naval History Book Reviews Author Chats. Today we are with Rear Admiral James R. McNeil, Supply Corps United States Navy retired, and we're going to be talking about the book he co-authored, The Herndon Climb, A History of the United States Naval Academy's Greatest Tradition. A little bit about uh, Admiral McNeil, he was born in Hawaii, raised in Southern California. His father was a graduate of the United States Naval Academy, class of 62. That's going to come into play here. Uh, he's a graduate of class of 1986. He spent six years on active duty with the Supply Corps, transitioned into the Naval Reserve, and retired in 2017, having uh, achieved the rank of Rear Admiral in the Supply Corps. Uh, owner in several businesses. Uh, his wife, Peggy, uh, they met at the Naval Academy. She's also a, a graduate of class in 1986. They have three children and a grandson. The subject we're talking about today is this fellow here, uh, William Herndon. Uh, Commander Herndon uh, <laughs> died uh, at sea uh, on the SS Central America in 1857. We're going to hear a little bit more about that. A uh, class of 19, 1860 built a memorial, a monument in his honor. And that's going to be the subject of today's uh, talk, uh, a fine tradition at the Naval Academy. Uh, it culminates with the placement of a uh, combination cover at the apex of, the, of this obelisk. So some questions I'm going to be asking. Um, uh, Admiral McNeil, why this book? He's going to talk a little bit about uh, Commander William Herndon. Uh, he's going to discuss how he teamed with his co-author uh, uh, and their approach on writing this book. And we want to talk about why Naval Academy alums not, uh, and non-alums should have an interest in this book. How are you doing there, sir? I'm doing great. Really appreciate you having me on. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the book. Uh, first of all, talk about uh, Commander Herndon. So Commander Herndon is a, a fascinating character in naval history. Uh, certainly he's known for the Herndon Monument, and the Herndon Monument was erected in his honor by his uh, brother-in-law, uh, Matthew Fontaine Morey, who's uh, the father of oceanography. And the reason that Herndon got the monument was that he went down with the ship, uh, his ship in 1857, the SS Central America. And it was a, an interesting time uh, because the telegraph had just come out. So when Admiral Her or when Captain Herndon's ship went down, a lot of the survivors, which were all the women and children survived, about 500 men drowned, but they got all the women and children off. And all of the women were interviewed when they got into the shore. And they all told about the heroism of Captain Herndon. And because the telegraph was uh, relatively new, it really was kind of the first story in the United States to go viral, if we can use a modern term to talk about that. But Captain Herndon also had uh, done something uh, really interesting. So when he was a lieutenant, uh, in the early 1850s, he was given an order by the Department of the Navy to explore the Valley of the Amazon. And that's all it was. And if for those uh, that have read Message to Garcia, he really uh, took on Message to Garcia. And he put together an expedition and he spent about a year going from one side of the Amazon to the other. And in the midst of, of doing this, he kept a personal journal. And he talked about the, the people, the food. The, the, the floral, the fauna, everything. He boiled water at the temperatures that they were at, to, or at the altitudes they were at, I should say, to figure out what uh, uh, altitude they were. And he kept this very, very detailed journal. And so when he got done after a year, he submitted his report and people read it. And when they read it, it was uh, very, very well received. And they kept printing more copies because it was in so much demand. And eventually turned into, they published it as a book and it became a bestseller. So he was well known uh, before this happened in 1857. So really, really a fascinating guy uh, who uh, really deserves the, a monument in his honor. 
Okay, so the monument was uh, put up, uh, I guess, on the eve of the Civil War. And uh, so how does this uh, monument transform into this uh, uh, to annual tradition? And uh, also, I guess, how did you get interested in writing about this tradition and uh, in engaging a, uh, a writing partner on this? Okay, so a lot, lot to unpack there. So. Uh, we, we did a lot of research. There is, there is not a ton of information. There is, it's not very binary about one day they decided to climb. But as best as we could determine from our research is the area that, uh, where the Herndon Monument is, for those that have been to the Naval Academy, is right across from the chapel. And one interesting thing about the Herndon Monument is that it's the only monument at the Naval Academy that's never been moved. So if you ever see an old picture, uh, the Herndon Monument has been in place the entire time in its same exact spot. So it kind of gives you a frame of reference. But in that area, there used to be a row of hedges called, and that was called, the walkway there was called Lover's Lane. And the midshipmen in the early 1900s would take their drags, which is Naval Academy slang for dates, and they would, in the very early 19th century, prim and proper fashion, would take their dates and they would sit in these benches, but they were blocked by hedges. And perhaps, you know, a male midshipman, of course, no women at the academy then might steal a kiss or two. And so that area became Lover's Lane and it was off limits to please. And so when the graduation ceremonies used to be held on the Naval Academy grounds, when they had a, a, a small stadium there, and once they grad, once the upper class graduates, everybody moves up a rank. So the, as soon as graduation was over, the plebes became youngsters, became sophomores. And so the plebes started uh, running into Lover's Lane and uh, kind of being there and running around and kind of acting the fool kind of with the idea of, hey, we can be here now. And so then that gradually came to where they would uh, take pictures in front of Herndon and then, of course, you know, one, everybody tries to one-up themselves and each other. And so then they were taking pictures of themselves climbing Herndon. And as best as we can determine, this really started to irritate the upper class because to them, the plebes were still plebes. And so at some point uh, in the uh, late 50s, early 60s, they decided they were going to grease the monument to prevent the plebes from getting up there. And that's how kind of the, how the climb started. And of course, it, it, the first official climb was my dad's class in 1962. Uh, and it, uh, you know, it had various forms up until that point. Some years they had it, some years they didn't. Uh, but that's kind of what, we, as well as we could determine in our research, the first official climb. And sadly, uh, as, as, uh, as you know, it was not held this year because of the pandemic. Uh, the Naval Academy has said they are going to try to do two climbs this spring, one for the class of 23 and one for the class of 24. Uh, we certainly hope they do that, but that's kind of the history. Now, how we got into this, Scott, my co-author, and I have known each other since junior high school, and he is an author. He's written uh, some books uh, and a, a Time uh, a Defender series, a science fiction time travel series, and he called me one day, and it was actually May of 2015, had said that he had seen the Herndon climb on Sports Center. He thought it was really cool, and had I had ever heard of it. And of course, I said, yes, I've heard of it. In fact, it's the second best day of my life, which it was after graduation. And he said, I think it would make a great book. And I didn't want to burst his bubble, but I really didn't want to write a book. I didn't really didn't want to, I was really busy at the time. I'd been reactivated out of the reserves and active duty. I had a, a lot going on, but I really didn't want to do another book on the Herndon climb. As, as our publisher would say, the world doesn't need another biography of John Paul Jones. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I viewed it. However, when I did research, we found out that there was no book on Herndon. There wasn't any, nobody had ever written about it. There was simply, other than our newspaper articles about the event, uh, there was a Wikipedia page. So uh, I told him when I retired from the Navy, we would we would dig into it. Uh, we worked on it, uh, you know, very piecemeal. And then once I retired in the fall of 2017, uh, we worked on it in earnest, got our book deal in 20 of 18 with the Naval Institute Press. 
and it, uh, it'll be out uh, September 1st. So just uh, about 10 days from now, week from now. Well, that's excellent. And I suspect that, well, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, of course, uh, uh, this thing would be, uh, you'd probably be at, be at uh, football games uh, doing book signings, and, and this thing would be uh, flying out of boxes. Uh, I, it still will. This is going to be something that's going to be selling for years to come. Uh, now, the one question I had uh, that uh, that hat on the uh, top of the yes. on the top. What, yes. Any so, uh, anything there? Yeah. So the tradition is just for for those that aren't familiar. The tradition is you have the Herndon Monument, which is twenty one a uh, twenty one foot monument that is. Uh, greased with uh, lard or, or Crisco or whatever, and then the plebes have to climb to the top using kind of a human pyramid type of method, and they have a plebe uh, cap up there, and the tradition is is that their plebe year is officially over when they successfully climb to the top, someone takes the plebe hat off and puts on an upper class combination cover and that is the uh, unofficial end to, to, to plebe year. They're not, they, they transition from plebes to fourth class midshipmen. Now their tradition is, or the, what the saying is, is that whoever climbs to the top and, and it is the one to pull the, to pull the cover off will be the first admiral in the class. Uh, that we have verified has never happened. However, in the book, we have a really interesting story uh, about a couple of roommates that get pretty darn close to it. So I don't want to. I don't want to ruin ruin that chapter for people. But uh, there's a really cool story in the book about uh, a couple of roommates from the class of '69 and 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 ha and, and how they fit into that whole uh, history and, and tradition. Okay. No, my uh, uh, a former executive director of the class, Todd Creekman, uh, will probably be very interested to probably read that section. He was class of '50. 50, uh, 69. Uh, okay, so, uh, uh, so so getting on to the question, this is going to be obviously an interesting book to, for the alums, but for, for outside audiences, uh, uh, you know, what are some of the stories that would make, would make a compelling read? Well, uh, yeah, one of the things that we tried to do is, is not make it what I call inside baseball with a lot of, of slang and make it only to the Naval Academy audience. We kind of figured we had a built-in audience with, with alumni. So we purposely wrote the book uh, for somebody who's never been to the Naval Academy, ha does not, had never seen the Herndon Monument. So we have uh, a second person account, three chapters that are a second person account of, of putting themselves, putting someone into the body of someone climbing. So we give them that aspect. We talk about, you know, Captain Herndon and his uh, time, you know, what he did, the different things that he did. We talk about, as we talked about the, the snake dance, which was the uh, start of the Herndon climb with Lover's Lane. Uh, we also have a lot of different stories. We have uh, uh, a story uh, of Kristen Dickman, uh, who was a plebe who passed away in her sleep in, in, the, in Bancroft Hall in 2008. Uh, before her uh, Herndon climbs, so we told her story. Uh, we also have a story of uh, Chris Bianchi, who is the uh, class of 2019, who is the class of 20 or 2016 climber, uh, and his history uh, with his dad and uncle, who both uh, perished in helicopter crashes. We tell the story of the Bianchis. Uh, we talk about uh, the longest climb. That was actually our sample chapter we submitted to the Naval Institute Press. Uh, the, the, the fastest climb is the class of 1975 in about 18 or 20 minutes, pretty fast. The longest climb is the class of 1998, and theirs is over four hours. Oh, my. So that, that's a really fun story. Uh, there's um, just all sorts of uh, other little tidbits. Uh, of course, the class of 86, my class, we get the story of our climb in there. Uh, and then the last chapter is, is kind of my story. Uh, Scott and I did, a, you know, kind of an interview back and forth, and I talk about how I got to the Naval Academy. I talk about my plebe year uh, and just talk about, uh, you know, why the Herndon climb meant so much to me. So 
it's uh, it's something for everybody. You know, it's kind of a cliche, but uh, the Kristen uh, Dickman story is very very sad. Uh, there's so is the Chris Bianchi story with his his father and his uncle. But there's also some stories that are that are funny. There's some stories that are um, and can it make you a little bit mad. We have uh, a story about the women in the '80s and how they were treated very very poorly. Uh, so that will probably make some people angry. Uh, uh, hearing the stories, it certainly did me. So it's it's got something for everybody. Uh, it's not a textbook uh, history of the Herndon climb. It is simply a series of kind of anecdotes and 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 really a, a fun read uh, about over, a little over two hundred pages. And uh, I think everybody will enjoy it uh, if they're able to pick it up. Well, I, uh, I appreciate your time. I, I think this you know, was a, a really good summary, and it, it certainly uh, has perked up my interest in, uh, in the subject. I'm, I've learned a little bit today, and uh, we look forward to uh, uh, posting this and uh, uh, drawing attention to this uh, new publication. Now, of course, it's the Naval Institute Press. So if yeah. folks want to get, get a copy of the book, uh, you just go to www.usni.org uh, and uh, you click on the Naval Institute Press and it should be out there. Yep, and just a plug for the U.S. Uh, for the Naval Institute Press. If you're a member, uh, you get a discount on the book. Uh, I think it's a 40% discount. So uh, a plug for our friends there uh, who you know to, who took a chance on you know a couple of guys who uh, you know who who didn't have a track record in this area so we're we're we'll always be very very uh honored and 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 blessed that they you know took a chance on us uh, it's also available on Amazon and uh yeah i, I think that uh, people will enjoy it it's uh it's a it's a fun book it uh we, we put a lot of time into it it took us you know about 5 years from beginning to end and uh, i think everybody will enjoy it okay well thanks again for your time and uh uh, participating in Naval History Book Review, author chats at the Naval Historical Foundation. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on.